I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello, everyone. This, welcome to Bigfoot America's Creek Devil. Uh, Tom isn't joining us today. He's had kind of a setback with his cancer, and I'll address that in just a moment. Forrest is working today, and uh, Chuck's got some family issues, but we have David and Milo with us. Um, Normally, Tracy would be here, but he's his schedule's different, too, so we kind of have to juggle our days when different people can be on. Um, before I get going, you know, I, I know Tom's a very modest guy, and he wouldn't want me to mention this, but uh, I've talked with the other panel members about this, and everyone agrees that, um, you know, Tom usually comes on and makes the announcement for Patreon, and uh and i'll say something too about you know how much we appreciate everybody going on youtube if you're listening on youtube and hitting the like button and you know if you could subscribe and and help us spread the channel out there to other people uh but addressing the patreon stuff and we don't say this you know most people just ask for patreon to support their channel all the patreon money that comes in goes to tom to help with his cancer battle so uh, if people want to know where mm -hmm. Patreon money goes with this channel, it goes directly to Tom for his battles. Tom was um, had his own business for many years and only purchased health care when he needed it. So he didn't really have any health care you know, plan or anything like that. Uh, and COVID killed his business completely. So fortunately, him and his wife, you know, they didn't owe a lot of money in their home and their expenses weren't super high or anything. But anyone who's dealt with cancer knows that the cost can be really extreme. Tom was telling me uh, the chemo treatments can be as much as $15,000 per treatment. And Tom just doesn't have any money for things wow. like that. I saw Tom in September and he's not even able to drive anymore. Um, his wife, you know, brought him to see where I was staying. And, you know, we, the two of us took off and we drove around where we were in the field last year and had a great time. Um, and I took him home. But uh, he's he's not doing as chipper as he he sounds in the recording. So if anybody out there, you know, wants to help Tom, they can do it through Patreon. Or if there's other ways, I mean, you can contact me directly at wjevning at gmail dot com, and I can, you know, connect you with him. Um, but that's kind of where things are. So sorry to be kind of a downer, guys, but I just want to keep our our listeners, people who really enjoy Tom in loop kind of as to what's going on so he's not uh like i say doing real well this week and he he doesn't tell us all the time what's going on we don't hear about things sometimes until a month or two later okay with yeah. that having said that um mike thanks for joining us today okay thanks for uh, inviting me and now tell everybody, if you would, you don't have to give specific locations. Just what part of the country are you in? Mm -hmm. I'm in the state of Maryland. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to hand the microphone to you and tell us what's going on. Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. Can everybody hear me okay? Very well, yes. Oh, yeah. All right. Cool. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, nice. And we have Dave and Milo on. Is that Dave, in addition to Will? Okay. Dave and Milo, sure. yes. I got everybody here. Cool. Um, yeah, so I've been a longtime fan of the show, probably going back about five years. Um, and back when I think the show was Witness of the Unknown before Creek Devil. Um, so going back a few years and just got really interested that way. And um, um, one of the things I like to do when I moved to Maryland was um, I have two dogs and we go do a lot of hiking and I end up hitting every state park within, you know, 50 mile radius of where I lived. Um, do you more information? I'm roughly halfway between Baltimore and DC. If that gives you, you know, a better idea. Um, so anyway, um, you know, in all the, you know, the hiking and outdoor stuff we've done, um, been noticing a lot of things, um, maybe, you know, Bigfoot related and 
you know, getting some cues from the show here about, you know, what to look for. Uh, I pretty much had every single piece of evidence thrown at me in terms of, you know, footprints, tree structures, bone piles, sounds, um, but never actually saw like a face-to-face sighting of one, but, you know, have had everything else, you know, every other piece of evidence leading up to that. And, you know, over the past few years, I've been kind of been in contact with Will and been kind of sharing, you know, a lot of things I've found. And, uh, you know, I got a few things here I'd just like to share with you guys about, you know, some of the things I've, I've seen. Um, any questions before we start? Well, no, not yet. All right, cool. Um, yeah, so um, there's a, you know, there's a few state parks around me. And one of the uh, the big things I've, you know, I've found around this area was uh, footprints. So, um, you know, lo and behold, you know, in the middle of winter, um, near a pond and actually walking into a pond, I've found, you know, footprints with uh, five toes. And, um, you know, being in Maryland in the middle of winter, you know, near a body of water, it, you know, I wouldn't expect to find, you know, a person in bare feet walking around. So I was like, hmm, that's interesting. So I've taken a few pictures um, and sent them to Will and some other people to look at. And um, they thought it was kind of interesting. Um, and you know, like I said, it was, you know, the, 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 the footprints are about the size of my foot, but you know, like I said, there was five toes mm-hmm. and if you look at the uh, the prints that were actually, you know, deeper into the soil um, than what my print did being, you know, so it's probably something, you know, a lot hairier than I am. You know, I'm, I'm about 250 pounds. So, um, and other things like, um, you know, going to like, you know, wildlife management areas, there's a lot of trails I go to where, you know, we have like, you know, not tree structures, but sort of like, you know, uh, trails off of like main trails where, you know, it's on the side of a hill. So it's like a switchback trail. And I would see a lot of like, you know, um, trees or branches on like the lower side of the hill actually folded over going upwards instead of downwards. So you would think with gravity and deadfall, it would fall down the hill, but these are actually pushed over, um, you know, it, in front of the path as opposed to, you know, going the other way. So I thought that was kind of interesting and it seemed very going you know, uphill. Yeah. Like kind of, so were so they, bent on like, going, they were bent going up. Yeah. They were bent going. Yes, exactly. Bent going up the hill. Like, so if you're going like on a switchback trail, you know, like on the side of a, you know, meandering on the side yeah. of a hill, it wouldn't fall downward. It was kind of like folded over the trail going upwards, you know, um, so it was either, um, you know, something did that look like on purpose for whatever reason. And, you know, in addition to like other tree structures we are seen, you know, um, I guess, uh, tree breaks and, um, some other like small pyramid type structures, you know, near that area. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Um, as far as like encounter type of stuff, um, I was, there was one, not like a state park, but it's more like a, you know, wildlife management area slash tree farm type of area where, um, you know, we were hiking in the middle of, you know, like, I guess it was probably fall because, um, if you're familiar with the East coast and the, or the Northeast, it gets very like green and, and, um, there's a lot of brush and, uh, you know, barbs off the trail and it's very thick. Um, it's very thick going through the woods, even on like, you know, maintained trails. So I did a lot of my hiking in the, you know, fall and winter months. Um, but this one occasion, um, if you can imagine the tree farm is kind of like a, a bunch of cut roads through a, a forest and, they kind of like make almost like a grid pattern of like, you know, these like five or 10 acre plots. Right. And one time there, there's a, there's always like this one section where it was like, it was like a dense, this one plot was like a denser set of woods and others. It was very, um, I guess wet and almost like 
swampy. And one time I was coming up with the dogs, we were coming down the trail towards like the corner of this plot. And we hear this large knock. And it was almost like a, you know, someone took a baseball bat and hit a tree. It wasn't like a, it wasn't like a popping sound, but it was like a whack, like a really loud. And that was probably, you know, maybe 100, 200 feet in front of me into that, that, you know, wood line there. And I was like, hmm, okay, that's interesting. And then we kept going forward some more, and there was like another even louder one right after that. And I was like, okay, um, someone just doesn't want us over here. So <laughs> I turned the dogs around, we marched out. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, other things like um, in that same area, I've heard like some almost like like a scream bark. I think Thomas mentioned like a sometimes they do like a bark growl kind of thing where you know I kind of was going down one of the trails in time. I thought I had heard something similar to that. So um, something you know um, something that was uh, concerning, but you know. Um, we end up getting out of there anyway. So, um, and other sounds I've come across like, um, almost like rock clacking. Now this other particular state park, um, we were going down this trail, which kind of meanders down this hill and, you know, I would stop and just kind of listen for things and just kind of take the, you know, take the air in and everything. And I almost get like this kind of like subtle, like rock clacking, almost like, like it almost sounds like Morse code and I don't know, Will, have you ever, um, I know you've heard a ton of different sounds out there, but have you ever heard like any kind of rock clacking from these creatures? Yeah. We've heard stuff like that. Yeah. And it was almost like, you know, off in the distance, I heard like, you know, like almost like a, like a quick, like almost like a Morse code type of sound. And, you know, I didn't see anything, but it was definitely, you know, noteworthy when I got closer to it. So, um, anyway, interesting things. So, um, and also, um, a couple other interesting, like, I guess, um, things I came across in the woods. Uh, one time I found a, um, right on the side of this trail, actually in the corner of this trail, there was a, um, a deer carcass, you know, high up in the tree. It was basically the spine of the deer with the the head and antlers is still attached to it. And it was basically wrapped around the tree almost like a snake. And <laughs> um it was just you know, I took a picture of it sent it to Will and um and, you know, just thought that was kind of never seen anything like it. I didn't know, you know, what, who or why would someone do something like that. But um what I've heard is that they may do it to drive other, you know, potential, you know, competitors away from like a, like a food site or food source. You know, Um, you know, my thinking on that though, is, um, it's more of an attractant to other predatory animals, you know, so maybe, maybe they're baiting an area to bring more food in. I mean, excuse me. Something we really don't know yet. Yeah. They're trying to, Yeah. So they're trying to like you know from a curiosity factor that it draws them in, then they grab them. Exactly, kind of a kind of maximizes your kill. Basically, you know, if you can you kill one larger animal and you put it where it's available, then you got more coming in. Oh, okay, no, well, almost like fishing, but not in the water. Yeah, exactly. Just setting up bait. Right. Go ahead, David. Hmm. I was going to ask him uh, back whenever you were walking the dog and you heard the knock, yep. and then yep. you heard another one. Was the knock was the second knock coming from the same direction as the first one, or was it a reply? Could you tell? It was so. We were walking towards the wood line. There is probably twenty feet in front of us. We heard the knock. I stopped, and then I paused for about five seconds. Then I we started walking towards again, and it came from the same direction, almost the same, like the same person or whatever was doing it, and okay. it was like. It was almost like, get back, you know. That's kind of yeah. the message I got. That's how I would have taken it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, I didn't want to I didn't want to open that door, so, you know. Um, 
And so getting back to that deer that was in the tree. So of and other times on that same trail in the, in that state park and kind of a funny side note, that's, you know, different, you know, in state parks, they have different colors for different trail, you know, trails. And this was actually called the red trail for <laughs> kind of a funny name for, you know, where I'm finding all this stuff. But, um, I found a lot of bone piles, um, near there as well, probably within 50 or hundred feet of where that, um, uh, deer carcass was in the tree. And what I found was it's almost like perfectly round, um, piles of bones, um, basically a couple of feet off of the trail. And these were, looked like, you know, deer remains, but they were, you know, picked clean, you know, and they were like white as a sheet of paper, you know, um, I don't know if it was because they were there for a while and every critter took a nibble out of it or, you know, the environment did that, but almost like they were like bleach white, you know, and I have pictures of it, but you know, they don't do it justice to how, you know, white these things were. Um, so if, you know, found remains near that, um, uh, that deer carcass in the tree. So maybe, you know, that's evidence of that, you know, is actually what they're trying to do is, you know, bait more creatures in for prey. Um, hey Mike, type of thing. Yes, sir. how far, how far were, uh, are these state parks away from like Baltimore, you know, or, or any, any, uh, rural, you know, any towns or are they pretty far away or, uh, within a half an hour, half hour. So, okay. Yeah. I, I would say from the one where I found the, the deer in the tree, you could get on the road and be at the DC line in about a half an hour, if, if that. Um, so it was one of the local like state parks. There's, there's a few river systems in the area, and it was basically, um, you know, one of those uh, a state park off of one of the local, um, you know, river tributaries. So, yeah, it's 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 kind of surprising once you step back and think about it. Like, you know, I've got more stuff here too, but you know, finding all the stuff within, you know this big metropolitan gray area and it's kind of interesting too so um and another um another encounter or not encounter but another thing i found in the woods it's probably the most disturbing thing i found um in, in all the things i've come across was um there was a there's a local not a state park but it's like a like another wetland wildlife management type of area um and you know there's like access roads and then i was you know walking my dog at the time and um actually i only had one dog at that point this is like three or four mm -hmm. three years ago and so walking down the road and there was like a little side road that goes into the you know into the woods and this is like kind of swampy area so when you walk on the trail it kind of like dips down on either side into like a swamp land and you know, there can be more or less water there depending on, you know, the rainfall. So you kind of go in from like, you know, like it's not flat ground. It's like, you know, like a tall to a tall kind of thing through a swamp land kind of thing. And so, you know, I just decided to check it out some more and go into the woods and going about mm, maybe 200 yards into the woods there. Um, we come around, the, come around this corner and I'm just checking things out. And I looked down, my dog's nibbling on something. And then <laughs> lo and behold, there's a, a deer carcass there. Now, yeah, was, I've seen, you know, dead deer before, but what disturbed me about this one was that it looked like, it looked like something had just mutilated this deer. Basically it looked like, um, you know, if a child had gotten a new toy and started pulling the nose and the arms off of it and just going to town on it, that's what this deer looked like. So. <laughs> He basically had a, a deer carcass with, you know, the spine, uh, some ribs, the uh, skull, and then like one leg, and the other legs would be like, you know, over in like another corner of this clearing area. And another thing I found was that one of the um, legs was snapped in half, um, you know, and it's just, this is like the thigh bone, and it was, you know, pretty big. I think Will, I sent you a picture of that. Yeah, that's not something you'd um, see some other animal doing. Right. Right. And it would, um, I kind of looked for, I'll have to go look again. I was looking for like teeth marks or anything, but 
it looked like someone had snapped it like we would snap a pencil in half but you know obviously it would take something a lot stronger than us to do this but but again it looked like i mean i thought it came into like a crime scene because the deer was spread over like this 15 foot wide like circle area of like it was just you know demolished and except with that you know partial carcasses hanging around and then there was like a tree near it too where it looked like i don't know if it had urinated on it or something but the it was like bleached white it was almost like a you know it was like kind of like a i don't know like but I don't know. It, it, almost like it was. It wasn't like you know, like bark or brown. It was like a something had, like it had been out in the sun something. for a long time. Yeah, but like um, I got pictures of it somewhere. But it's almost like uh, it was almost, almost like it was bleached. It was weird. I, I it would just uh, something had done something to it, and it, it just very it stood out. And then in addition to that, that whole area, the fur, the the, the the deer was just all over the place. It was like, you know, there was so much fur from the deer around. It looked, looked like snow in the ground. You know, that's that's how much this thing was torn apart. You know, you know, Forrest had a situation that happened to her like that where, and she sent pictures where something had urinated on a tree um, yeah. and it bleached it out. And also, uh, Carol in Missouri, you know, her mother's car, the creatures had urinated on her car repeatedly and uh, and stained it and apparently and apparently for how she felt them to be able to track her location i I don't know for sure but it's not the first time we hear about things like this Mm -hmm. hey mike yes sir whenever you've been in those areas with your dogs have have they ever acted in a way that wasn't normal for them a little bit. Or they didn't want um, to go in a certain direction, or they were hesitant to go in a certain direction. Anything like that? Well, getting back to those tree knock situation, that we were all we were all stopped dead in our tracks, basically. And <laughs> after the second knock, we kind of looked at each other and we we're like, "Ah, oh, let's go." And so um, that's one situation I can remember, you know. But if you're talking about something like where I'm just walking along and they're acting squirrely about something. Um, yeah, maybe, but I don't remember anything in particular. Um, Pay attention to that, because a lot of most dogs, if, if these things are known to be in an area, that you'll see a clear change in attitude with the mm-hmm. dog, whether it be yep. hesitation or growling or just outright fear. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I have two small beagle mixes, and they're pretty... You know, they have their noses to the ground a lot and but I don't know if I think if something was in the area I think they would still I think they would probably snap too and you know be aware of it yeah. I think right yeah. yeah they'd let you know you'd know something's going on yeah um getting back to the area with the the mutilated deer carcass we, I went in there another time and um I you know, went to back there probably, you know, like a month later just to check it out again, see if anything changed. And this time when I went back, I went by myself. Um, and I'm walking down the, the main road to get to that cutoff to go into the woods. And I hear something like stand up and just take off, like, like you know, just something just barrels to the woods. And like I said, this is, you know, summertime and it's like... Um, there's so much under, you know, there's so much underbrush and um, briars and, you know, uh, under, you know, undergrowth in the woods that you can't see, you know, depending on the area, you can't see more than 20 feet, you know. Um, but this thing sounded like Shaquille O'Neal just stood up and just took off into the woods. And, it, you know, it didn't sound like a deer. It sounded like something much bigger than a deer. So I was like, that's interesting. <laughs> but it, so um, but that was, you know couple hundred yards away from where I found that mutilated deer. Um, and, um, yeah. And, you know, getting back to, you know, changes in attitude. A lot of times, like, you know, like when I come across these things, like either the deer, the deer carcass in the tree or on the ground, you know, like it feels like I, don't, I haven't really gotten the, the feeling I've been watched, but I've gotten the feeling like something's definitely been there. Like, 
like something that's not us that has been there. It, it's sort of like a just an intuition kind of thing, you know. So, um, yeah, and I guess that's the the main things we've come across here in Maryland so far. Um, well, I got, I got a question way, for you. Yes, sir. Back when you found the the tracks going up the hill. How steep was that hill exactly? Do you recall? And were the were the prints farther away from each other or closer? Um, so, I mean, the thing uh, uh, the thing on the hill was the tr- just the trees, the bent over trees on the trail. I I did find I did find footprints, but they were near. Um, they weren't like going up a hill; they were on a trail. So okay. Um, there was one I found actually this past January, which was a nice clear footprint. It was probably the size of my foot, you know, it's probably 12 inches, um, you know, with five toes and it was heading into the water and I saw a second print, but it was definitely lighter. It wasn't like, you know, it was the first one was in like, you know, um, uh, wetter soil or muddier soil, you know, so that's what it it sank into and the second one was, you know, more on the surface, but they were actually go heading into the water. So it looked like, you know, something was walking in there for whatever reason. And like I said, this was January. Um, and, and yeah, you're not going to be out there in January and bare feet. Right. And this area actually was actually, you know, through, wasn't near any kind of like park area or, um, you know, recreation area. This was a little bit of a bushwhack and through the woods and then you come across a pond and that's where I found the footprints. It wasn't like, you know, near a trail or some, you know, any kind of other like area set aside for people. You know what I mean? So. Right. Um, yeah. So that's, um, that's kind of what I've had to tell today. So, um, I, I was just sitting here looking through some of the pictures you sent, Mike. There's some really interesting stuff that you've got going there. Yeah. And Maryland, your encounters in Maryland aren't the only ones I know of. So uh, mm-hmm. for people who think that's not an active Bigfoot area, think again. Right. Yeah, yeah that we, picture we're... with the deer hanging in the tree, that, that definitely looks like baiting to me. Yep. Yeah, I've it, got... It was weird because... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say I, I got other pictures from other regions in the country of very, very similar things. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, like I said, these these different spots of uh, – there's probably like three main areas where I've gotten, you know, collected all this data, right? So they're all within about, you know, like I said, an hour tops of, like, Baltimore. So – um, one of, some of them are actually not too far from the Pennsylvania border. Some are down closer to DC. Some are closer to, you know, directly between DC and Annapolis. So a lot of area, you know, there's a lot of, if you look at a map, there's a lot of greenery around here. You just got to look for it. And there's a lot of, you know, waterways and access ways that they can travel in too. So it's, can you, um, can you name the state parks or is that too close to home? Um, no, one of them's the, um, Patuxent river. Um, and if you know the Patuxent river, it's, there's like three different tributaries for it. There's an upper middle and lower, I think. And these were taken like near one of, this is a state park that was near one of those, um, you know, tributaries. Cool. Um, yeah. Because that way, I mean, Google, you can slap it in there and check what kind of topography and all that kind of stuff. It'll at least give you some ideas or me to, you know, make it relative to where you're where you're at, you know, what you're looking at terrain wise. And Will, if you remember, when I send you a picture of something, I usually send a map with a circled area where I found it. Absolutely. Yes. Um, And so just to kind of, you know, put a. Yeah, you know, put a, a brass tack in that piece of data, you know. God, that's amazing. I mean, Will just sent me the pictures uh, of the the deer in the tree. That, yep. that, who does that? That is wicked. 
See now, exactly. And, and big cats don't do that. Not in North America. Wow, that that is, you know, to me that's like Blair Witch spooky. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and you, know, you know, it's funny is I went back there, you know, much later after this happened. Yeah. And I, I told there's a there's a you know like a not a ranger station but like a office there for the you know Department of Wildlife Management. And um, I was talking to the uh, you know the caretaker or the ranger there, and I was telling them about this, and they're like, "Really?" I'm like, "Yep." And you know, I think at one time I mentioned, well, you know, there's been Bigfoot sightings in Maryland too," and he just kind of rolled his eyes. I'm like. He's like, I'm like, anyway, <laughs> yeah. I think they're kind of, they're, they're kind of, you know, programmed to kind of dismiss that kind of stuff. But, you know, I um, think would be interesting is talk to experienced hunters and stuff. Have has anybody else ever seen anything like that? You know, a, a deer carcass up in a tree. That is wicked. Yeah. It was, it was like not just hanging there, but it was wrapped around the tree like a snake. Yeah. Um, that. I'm trying to, you know, look at that. And the other thing too was the one the deer the deer carcass was found in the middle of the woods because the thing with that was is one it looked like it was just you know torn apart by a wild animal or thing, and two it was very far off the main trail so it wouldn't be you know if someone was trying to fake something and show off that wouldn't be the place to do it you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, exactly. It, you just kind of you'd want it where it's found if you're going to do something like that, right? So yeah, bears yeah. they'll usually take their remains where they're going to eat. They'll cover it up, kind of let it sit for a little while, and then come back to it and hang out in the area. Right. Yep. Mike, I got a question for you. Sure. Back when you. When you heard the rock clacking, was it a, you said it was, did you say it was a fast rock clacking? Yeah, it was like, almost like a, okay, almost yeah. sounds like more that, code. Yeah, that, I was going to say, that tells me it was like a communication, but a lot of times they'll use rocks to like smash open small nuts and stuff like that. So if yeah. it was just like one like smashing sound you heard every now and then. That's probably yep. what that was, but if it was fast, then it's probably communicating. Right. Yep. It's uh, it would hear something, and then a few minutes later, hear it again. And you know, it, it because I was kind of walking off trail down toward. There's a lot of like, you know, on the side of this hill that goes down to the river. Um, there's a lot of deadfall and when you have a tree fall over from its roots it's you got this big like wall where the roots are so it's you know i was walking i was just kind of like checking out these things and and you know who knows they may have been camped out there or something and you know if you went off just, trail if you went off trail it sounds like that might have been a sentry keeping an eye on you and he was alerting the others that were nearby what do you think Cus? yeah that's yeah, that's possible, sure. Yep. Sorry, guys, I'm looking through pictures here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, th- I think we all are. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's a lot of interesting stuff you got, Mike. Yep. So, yeah, just stuff, you know, I, I'd love to, you know, take the dogs out and you go hiking, and this is just stuff I find on my travel. So, um, and if I, you know, probably wouldn't have been aware of half the stuff or even just to keep my eyes open if I hadn't listened to the show. So, you know, thanks for that. Well, absolutely. Guys, you got any more questions for Mike or? No No questions. Just be careful out there. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Well, Mike, Tony, I, you know, I, with that picture is kind of like, God, well, too bad. It wasn't panoramic, you know, where you could in relatively to, like, uh, oh, what am I trying to say? Just, you know, in reference to where you take the picture and where it's at, you know, it, you want to go like you're trying to look around it, 
<laughs> if you see other stuff, that's where I'm. Oh going yeah. To go, I guess. Well, you know, yeah. that's all part of doing. You know, if you're if you're going to really get into doing this, I mean, yeah, you stop and you yeah. try. It, yeah. It's something. It's you have to learn to do it. You know, to to kind of stop and look around and. But if you're just going through an area and, and seeing what's there, and actually you're finding quite a bit for just you know, kind of a casual, you know, walk with the dog, you know, through the area. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you, obviously you'd want to do kind of a 360 and, and do searches and, you know, look at things from different angles and all that. But most of us don't think about that. Yeah. No. Yep. But I'm and, only saying that as, you know, matter of fact, hindsight. I'm not oh, trying sure. to critique it at all. I'm just going, God, I, I would love to see more, you know. Mm. Mike, I'll have to send you a few pictures of things from other areas and show you how similar what you found is okay. to other locations in the country. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, and then I think uh, that last the last thing I found in January, the footprint. Um, I think I sent you some other pictures where. So um, I'm walking along this ridge, like next to the pond, and there's just deadfall over the place but it looks like you know almost like a, another keep out type of um log structure you know throughout the trail so um you know like i said you, you walk through some of these areas it looks like a like a bigfoot super eight motel because <laughs> there's there's so many like uh areas they could you know camp out in or hide in or whatever you know you know we found one like that uh it was a couple of friends of tom's uh, you probably heard him talk about Kurt and Laura, and Kurt found this. Uh, and you wouldn't notice it. If you were going through an area, you know, hunting, and I think he was hunting deer, you wouldn't notice something like this. It would look natural until you start mm -hmm. examining it. And what it was, it turned out to be this kind of a blind that the creatures had created along a game trail, a heavily, right. heavily used deer game trail. And then there were probably, uh, I think we counted eight or ten, trees that were snapped over the 90 degree snaps where they were it, like this thing was constructed it was very it looked natural it looked like just a bunch of windfall but you don't except mm -hmm. outside of that spot there was nothing else damaged no other trees anywhere damaged just this one place and you know at first you would dismiss it you know if you didn't know any better but the more we looked at it the more we thought holy cow they created this so that deer coming down the trail would stop and just in that pause, the creatures could have been hiding in adjacent spots and, mm -hmm. you know, had an easy kill location. And it's actually, right. it's part of that footage is in our new uh, film that's coming out here. And I got to mention, it's actually, it's not posted yet, but it's going to be on Amazon Prime and Tubi so far. That Tubi is the second one that's licensed the film. Uh, so, you know, that'll be out pretty soon. I, I, Adam says that... Uh, Amazon Prime, they take up to 12 weeks to post something after they license it. I don't know about Tubi or the other sh shows out there so, or channels. So anyhow, I had to throw that out there. But yeah, it's very interesting. You know, some things, if you really pay attention that you see mm -hmm. out there that are just background things normally to us. Yeah. And I'm trying to like be disciplined in, hey, if I see a footprint or something else that's interesting, like a bone pile or whatever, you know, look for other things too like hair and scat or whatever absolutely so i'm trying to like I'm trying to like you know take in as much as possible not just you know casually you know take a picture of and walk away but hey what else is here if anything you know yeah exactly i, I always so. walk along and kind of scratch my head like okay what else is there is there something more to be seen that i'm not paying attention to right well fellas any other questions for mike or I'm I good. just want to thank Mike for coming on and keep yeah. in touch with us and let you know, well, let us know if you find anything else. Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks again. This is fun, and uh, you know, like I said, I've been collecting this stuff over four to five years, and been wanting to share it with somebody, and nobody's really interested in it. But oh, uh, no, no, yeah, thank you for letting me do this. I'm so. I'm very interested in it. And like I said, I'll send you some things that'll show you, you know, what you're finding isn't isolated. Okay. Very cool. And, of course, you're welcome to join us on, you know, Campfire Talk or, or the Q&A, you know, when we do those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. And uh, maybe we'll do that sometime. And, 
I'll keep an eye out and just keep you guys updated. So. All right, Mike. Well, listen, we certainly appreciate it. Yep. Thank you, Will. And thanks, thanks, buddy. Uh, thanks, thanks, Dave and Milo, and appreciate yeah. the talk. And uh, we'll have to do it again sometime. So. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there.